Mark Thiessen is the former chief speechwriter for then President George W. Bush and his defense secretary Donald Rumsfeld. He joins us from the American Enterprise Institute in Washington, where he writes on foreign policy and defense issues. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a chance for Mr. Romney to, to look presidential at a time when polls uh, show strong support for Mr. Obama's policy is slipping. You're a former speechwriter. What does uh, Governor Romney need to say today? Well, uh, it's interesting because uh, President Obama, few weeks, just a few weeks ago in Charlotte, President Obama was boasting about his foreign policy achievements and mocking Mitt Romney for how little foreign policy experience he has. Uh, it's amazing what a difference a couple of weeks makes. And as you point out, uh, the polls show that a support for President Obama's foreign policy is dropping, particularly among independents. Uh, a, NBA, a Wall Street Journal poll in August showed that they supported uh, Obama's foreign policy, approved of his foreign policy by a margin of five points, and today they disapprove, independents disapprove of his foreign policy by a margin of ten points. Um, so foreign policy has become a central issue here in this campaign, and it's not hard to see why the support is falling. I mean, the Middle East is on fire. We've got an American ambassador killed in, in, in Libya, uh, who uh, and uh, and the administration is not only has spent days denying that it was a terrorist attack, but then attacked you on CNN when you reported that it was a terrorist attack and that the ambassador was in fact worried about an Al Qaeda attack on his life. You've got the flag of the United States being torn down from embassies across the Middle East and replaced over sovereign U.S. territory with the flag of Al Qaeda. You've got tens of thousands of people being killed in Syria, and the administration is doing nothing about it. So we are. It looks like it looks like Tehran 1979 across the entire <laughs> Middle East. So and this is a what, moment for Romney. That's what many Republicans this. are saying. You know, the Democrats and some Republicans say Governor Romney stumbled badly when he criticized Mr. Obama after the death of the U.S. ambassador to Libya. But in the end, could you argue that Romney's tactic proved successful? Because it did change the conversation, at least about Libya. Yeah, I find it uh, f fascinating that so many people are talking about Romney had a gaffe. And it turns out he was right. Uh, that one, that it was wrong to put out a statement uh, criticizing the, uh, uh, apologizing for the video, which the administration has continued to do, and apparently Obama's going to do again today uh, in his UN speech. Uh, but also, you know, who's had the foreign policy gaps? It's President Obama. President Obama went on 60 Minutes this weekend and, and called what's happening in the Middle East bumps on the road. And the first ambassador killed since 1979 is a bump on the road. Uh, the, the American flag being torn down from well, embassies and Mr. replaced Obama, by the flag of Al-Qaeda. Mr. Al Obama came back and said bumps on the road meant, you know, there's going to be problems yeah, in you, the Middle East that you have to deal with. Yeah, and that I'm sure he... I, I'm just trying to be I'm fair I'm sure he tried to spin this. it. Well, no, but I mean, the thing is, no one's fair when Mitt Romney supposedly makes a gaffe that turns out not to be a gaffe, but when President Obama comes out and says something like that, then everybody's busy explaining it away for him. This, is a, this was a major foreign policy gaffe. In that same interview, uh, he said that, uh, that, Israel, that the complaints from Israel were just noise. He referred to Israel's complaints about Iran's nuclear program. He's in New York right now. He has time to go on The View, okay, but he can't well, meet well, with Bibi let's, let's Netanyahu. Center, let's have our conversation about noise. on Governor Romney right now, because he is about to speak before the Clinton Global Initiative. And, you know, yeah. the audience is full of, of leaders from around the world and, and leading business people, people who can really affect change through the world. So what should Mr. Romney yeah. say to prove to not only them, but to voters that he can handle foreign affairs, that he does have the answer to the problems that you're talking about? Specifics. Should he well, I think, mention specifics? Well, I think, he's, I think he's actually putting forward specifics today. He's laying out a vision for major reform of U.S. foreign aid. Uh, that take a, that he's going to put condition U.S. foreign aid to countries on uh, on their opening up their markets and removing barriers to trade and investment and making free market reform. So I think he's going to very lay out a very positive vision today. Uh, but you know, again, we're, I know we're talking about Mr. Romney, but uh, whenever Mr. Whenever Mitt Romney supposedly makes a gaffe, I mean, that whole trip to the uh, to uh, Israel, everyone said what a gaffe fest it was. He didn't make any gaffes. He called Israel the capital of Jerusalem, well, which by U.S. law let's it is. Go, let's but go when back, President Obama let's go back comes and talk out. Specifics about Mr. Romney's speech yeah. because he's about to speech in just a couple yeah. of minutes. We did get a few excerpts sure. from his speech that his campaign sent out. And you're right, he's going to talk yes. about his vision to bring our foreign assistance strategy into the 21st century mm -hmm. and harness the power of free enterprise to spur development. Um, a very kind of businessy yep. speech. Should there be more emotion yes. in there, I'm wondering? Well, more I think passion? at the Clinton Global Forum, I don't think. 
I, I think he's got plenty of passion. I saw, you saw a lot of passion yesterday when he was talking about President Obama's bumps on the road comment. I think he's brought a lot of passion to this. I think this is a different forum. This is the Clinton Global Forum. He's being hosted by a man who's endorsed his opponent. Uh, and it's not a campaign rally. It's a, it's a, this is going to be a substantive speech laying out a clear vision. And I think he's going to look very presidential. I think he's got a very serious proposal that he's putting forward. And uh, we're going to see him. Lay, uh, I don't think you're going to see a lot of direct hits on President Obama the way you did yesterday in this speech. Uh, just as President Obama is going to give a speech, and there's a lot to test for, for what he's going to say at the UN General Assembly today. Well, will this kind of speech, though, resonate with voters out mm -hmm. there? It may resonate with the audience, but will it resonate with voters? Because I'm sure that's on Governor Romney's mind, too. Sure. Well, you know, and one of the things I think you're going to see him doing today is trying to pivot this, this debate about foreign policy back to jobs and trade uh, and opportunity. I think he's going to make the argument that when, when, we, when we, our aid program should be t built towards developing free market partners around the world, helping uh, nations embrace the free market, embrace trade, and that in the long run helps American prosperity and creates jobs here at home. The man who's hosting him, President Clinton, when he came into office, one of the first things Bill Clinton did was join with Republicans to pass the North American Free Trade Agreement over the objections of Democrats. He actually worked with, got a majority of Republicans and a minority of Democrats in a coalition to pass that. President Obama has not passed a single free trade agreement of his own making uh, since coming into office. So there's a, I think you will see a subtle distinction being drawn what do you mean of between his, own his making? host, because President he, but Because he has passed trade issues dealing with Colombia. That one he, comes immediately to my mind. Th those were, all of those were negotiated by President Bush. He has not, he has not uh, signed So President Obama doesn't get any credit for pushing that through Congress, making. which has been difficult Sorry? to work with. But President well, Obama gets long, no credit for that? He, t he gets some credit for it, but, but he, like, he dragged his feet on it. He had to be pushed into it. This was, you know, when President Clinton came into office, he actually had a me uh, in his first months in office, he invited former President Bush, former President Ford, former President Carter, all the former presidents to the White House to stand together and say, let's pass the North American Free Trade Agreement. Pre President Obama didn't do that. Uh, President Obama didn't make this a priority. And he certainly, President Clinton, challenged protectionists in his own party from the White House saying that don't stand in the way of prosperity. You've never seen President Obama challenge his own party in that way. So I think uh, Bill Clinton was a champion of free trade. Uh, Barack Obama has been a reluctant uh, supporter of free trade agreements that already were approved, uh, already uh, in place before he came into office, and well, he hasn't come up with any of his own. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna um, move on to other news, but stick around, Mark, because um, Governor Romney's a little late in starting his speech, and, and we want to get your impressions okay. after um, Governor Romney wraps Sounds up. Good. Thank Looking you so much. About three hours from now, President Obama.